Hello everyone and thanks for coming. I'm Tomasa Rodrigo from BB Research and I'm going to present together with Álvaro our work to measure and monitor central banks' communication strategy using natural language processing and um, model topic modeling. We have structured the presentation in two parts. First of all, I'm going to briefly motivate the analysis and I'm going to describe the data we use and the methodology we follow. After it, Alvaro will present and will focus on the main results, showing you some of the applications we got for some central banks. Well, before starting, why this is important? Did you know that 80% of the total amount of web pages on the internet is composed just by text? Think on the information in the media, in the social media, in blogs, or in economic and financial reports. All this huge amount of data increase significantly the available information for the analysis. And we need to take advantage of it, because it will help us to understand the society, the economy, and the world. So why we are not taking advantage of it? Well, before, before it. Nowadays, we can exploit it using natural language processing that is also known as text mining or computational linguistics. We can exploit all this amount of data. In simple words, what does it mean, this methodology? It is just to quantify text, to extract meaning from the letters, and to convert it into numbers. This novel approach will help us, combining with traditional economic tools, to improve and increase the potential of applications in, the, in, in economics and in any other field. There is a huge potential for exploiting this new data to enrich the knowledge of the economy, the world, and how the society behaves. For doing, for doing it, here today we are going to show you an application to measure the central bank's communication strategy. What is this strategy? With this strategy, we refer to the information that central banks release about the economic situation and the current and future policy decisions. These decisions are really important because they move the financial markets and they play a key role in the economy. So until now, we, we know we have qualitative information to know how they, they think, how they behave, but was nowadays when we can quantify this communication strategy and to see their impact and evolution over time. So let's go in to take advantage of this 80% of data that we have and we haven't exploited until now. This slide summarizes really well the whole working process we follow in this project. First of all, we are going to start from the data we get. Then we are going to, to explain and to show you how we pre-process the data, how we clean and transform this data. And finally, we are going to apply topic modeling and sentiment analysis to have clear insights about all this and structured text. We are going to go through the presentation to each of these steps in the process. Starting with the information, as I said before, we are going to analyze the central bank wording referring to monetary policy through the communication reports published in their websites. For doing it, as you may imagine, we use web scrapping techniques. And basically, we are going to focus in three different types of notes. Press releases or statements, minutes, and speeches. What do we mean by statement? This is a short report about the decision on interest rate that is released immediately after the meeting on monetary policy. Some central banks decide to make a press conference where the president of the central bank explains the decision on monetary policy and answer questions from journalists. 
Some days later, or even some weeks later, a more detailed document explaining the reasons of this decision on monetary policy, together with giving an overview of the financial market, as well as the economic and monetary developments during the month, is released. This longer document, it is called Minutes. And finally, moreover, we are going to analyze speeches and articles that some senior central bank officials done during the month, and they are published in the uh, website of central banks. So we are going to take into account this huge amount of information re regarding this central bank for analyzing it. It is, it is called corpus. This is all the information that we are going to call from now on corpus, OK? When this corpus is identified, we are going to clean, to transform, and to pre-process all this data. To convert it from an structured test to a final database that is ready for the analysis. As you can imagine, and for sure that some of you have, have worked in, in this type of process, you know that this is the most time-consuming part of the process. This is really painful to work with it. We took several steps in order to have the data that we can use for the final analysis. For doing it, and just to summarize, uh, first of all, we break the documents into tokens. Tokens are just a list of words, numbers, punctuation, and symbols, just to put it like in a structure. Then we are going to use all these tokens for uh, getting the root of each word, that is, we are going to do steaming with the information. We are going to get rid of all punctuation and also to get rid of stop words. Did you know what uh, I mean with uh, stop words? These are words that appear really frequent or really infrequent in the document, and literature has proved that this word cannot disentangle content from one document to the other. So we are going to eliminate it in order to reduce dimensionality. Once we have all this data more or less prepared, the final step is to construct the document term matrix. Do you know what is that? It is like a huge matrix where we have the frequency of each term in each document. In that step, we convert this uh, unstructured data into numbers. And now we are ready for the analysis. We can go to the next part. In the next part, what we are going to do is to explain uh, the topic modeling or the approach that we use for modeling all this text. Here you can see like the image of the main model that we use. I'm not going to go through each step each technical step of the model. But I will be really happy if you have any question at the end of the presentation, you can come with me and we can discuss it, about it. But since we want to show you all the applications we got, I'm going to just give you the idea, the main insight of this model. We base our analysis on the latent, latent Dirichlet allocation. This is an unsupervised machine learning algorithm based on a Bayesian model that gives a probability to each word that appears in a document. That is, it is going to give me the optimal allocation of words in a certain number of topics over all the documents. So at the end of the day, I'm going to know that depending on how these words appear together with each other, I'm going to have some vectors of topics that are commented in the article. So without reading the article, I can have an image about which topics appear in this article. And finally, now I know what the, the article is talking about. But the other part that is really important to know was what is how they talk about those topics, right? And for doing it, we are going to apply sentiment analysis. We rely here on the lexicon approach. 
That is, we are going to use different dictionaries in order to capture words that has a positive connotation and words that has a negative connotation in the article. Okay, so here you see two of the dictionaries we are using. We are using the dictionary of Lauren and McDonald, that is a dictionary focused on financial markets, so a financial issue. So this is the, the issue that I'm, I, I care about. And also the dictionary of the Federal Reserve for financial stability. So you see that we have a huge number of words. Here is just an example that are classified in those two groups. So at the end of the day, I'm going to construct an indicator that gives me the average sentiment of the article. That is just to take into account all the words with positive connotation minus all the words with negative connotation over the total number of words. So at the end of the day, I'm going to take a measure that could go from minus 100, that it means that no positive words appear in the article, to 100, that is the opposite. No negative words appear. Normal values range between minus 10 and 10, with zero indicating neutral. But now, as you can imagine, this zero could mean that in the article appears a neutral language, or could be that positive words compensate with negative words. So take it in mind once you are going to interpret the results. Perfect. Now we have a complete, a comprehensive image of all the process we follow to get the results, what we care about. Now we are going to analyze here three central banks, the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, and finally, the Central Bank of Turkey. Here you can see an example where we see the words that appear most frequently when we uh, speak about monetary policy. So that's true that it can appear terms like percent, interest, borrow, overnight. This is for the three central banks. Then it is important also that uh, you take into account that we are not going to take just the words like independent. It is important to take the relationship between them. Why? Because there are broader terms like monetary policy that appears together and we want to capture it. So here in the network you can see like monetary policy appear together, industrial production, current account balance, there are words that normally appear together and we are going to consider it. Then we are going to study the evolution over time of all those terms. But here I would like to, to tell you something. If, you, if we take the easy approach that is just to take this frequency analysis and give me the words that appear most frequently in the article. Over all the year, we are going to capture almost the same words that are inflation, growth, prices. So you see that there are like little variations between one year and the other. Nonetheless, I explained before that we are going to take another approach that is to introduce a model that take into account this frequency analysis and take into account the relationship between words to give me a better image of the topics that appears in the article. So here, each word has a probability to be included in one topic. And a document is a mixture of topics, right? So this is a good way to identify words that appear together and could be related to one topic to the other. Taking all this information into account, now Alvaro is going to show you the many applications we got from these three central banks. Thank you very much, Tomasa. <laughs> well, at BBVA Research, we are an economic analysis department, so we work intensively in the techniques we use artificial intelligence as much as we can, but the final purpose for us is to understand things and to solve qu 
questions. So at the end of the day, our simple and final goal is to understand how the central banks, what they are talking about, which is using the dynamic topic model to identify those topics, and how they are related to each other, which is also important. How are they talking about these topics? And this is all of the related to the sentiment analysis that Thomas has explained. And also, which is important, is who is talking about? Because we can identify the different members of monetary policies of central banks to, to, how, to distinguish how they talk each, each other. So from the dynamic topic uh, analysis, what we identify first is these word clouds. Normally, you fix uh, 40 word clouds, 40 elements or 40 vector of words that the analysts have to identify. So there is a room here, not is all for the machines, not is all for the dynamic uh, international artificial intelligence. Is this our work also complement this because we have to identify these word clouds. For example, you can see here the, uh, the European Central Bank and the Central Bank of Turkey. And you will see that every central bank has its specific language. In the case of the European Central Bank, for example, they talk, of course, about the economic, they talk ab about monetary policy, but they also talk about important things for them, which is the banking union, the monetary uh, union integration, and the quantitative easing. Once, if you remember, years ago, when the interest rate reached zero, they have to use another tools to fight the crisis. In the case of the central bank of uh, Turkey, which is an emerging market, we identify another work clause relative to the global economic flows, to the global markets, to the economic activity, and also different kinds of economic activity. We are analyzing here a central bank about thing about any document, any report that you use in your life, the company reports, and you can do the same. Monetary policy and inflation. And we, once we identify the topics, we group these topics and categories. And for example, you can see that these topics are not static. They are evolving over time. And here you can see from 2006, and then we have the financial crisis in 2009 and 10, and now we have the recovery from 2016 onwards. In the case of the Central Bank, of the European Central Bank, what you see, for example, is that the gray color it is increasing significantly over time. What is this? This gray color it is what we call non-standard monetary policy. Once the interest rate reaches zero, the central bank has to use another tools, especially quantitative uh, arguments. In the case of Turkey, they are also changing over time. And you can see, for example, that in the lower part of the graph, the global flows are gaining importance. We can also use networks because networks are a useful tool to see how these topics, once we have identified the topics, how these topics relate each other. And again, everything is dynamic. So it is, this relation is not the same in the, in the pre-crisis period until 2007 that during the financial crisis and during the recovery. Let's see in the upper part of the presentation the European Central Bank. The pre Lehman, the pre-financial crisis, was in a standard relation of the topics, SMPS, standard monetary policy, related to economic activity, single currency, liquidity in banks. In the case of the, of the emerging uh, market uh, bank, which is the Central Bank of Turkey, they talk about inflation, economic activity, and monetary policy. Then something happened in the world in 2009, and in, 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 also in 2012 in Europe, and they changed completely. You see this NSMP, which is non-standard monetary policy. Everything changed in the upper part of the panel, and the relation with the other uh, uh, gets more complicated, and they also influence what is happening in the central bank of Turkey, which is a small central, uh, central bank, which is very dependent on the European Central Bank. After the crisis, they start to normalize again. But what is important for us is to understand that uh, during, after this crisis, the monetary policy makes much more complex for the central bank because they limited the standard tools and they have to use new tools 
that were using in the north and influencing uh, later in the rest of the countries. So this is useful for us to understand the complexity. But we can also use sentiment analysis not only to, uh, to analyze what are they talking about, but how, with, with, with sentiment. We can see here, for example, in the, in the case of the Turkish Central Bank, how, and this is no numbers here, economic activity and inflation are evolving over time, or also economic activity and employment. Or more specifically, how the monetary policy is tightened or easing relative to, to the total report. So at the end of the day, <coughs> we will be very interesting to know are the central bank prepared to tight rates or not? And it is very difficult, very different from the statements than from the minutes, as Thomas has commented. <coughs> so finally, we have to recheck all of this information to check with a manual or other analysis for cross-section. Uh, cross Last but not least, we are using also this analysis to analyze the Federal Reserve. And as you can see in the last slide, we can use all of this to identify how the different people talk related to the normal. <coughs> and this is not the same from the case of Mr. Grispan, Mr. Bernanke, Mrs. Yellen, or Mr. Powell. Remember that all of our analysis you can find here in our web page. Thank you very much. Good eh? Okay, thank you so much. And now is your time for questions that we, we think is the most interesting part of it. Here we just want to show you one of the applications that we got. But the important message that we want that you, you get from this presentation is the importance of analyzing all this amount of data that we have and we haven't exploited. There is a huge potential for getting value for your business, for your uh, university, academy, or for your personal life also. So any question about, about it? Okay. Thanks for the talk. Uh, are you using this tool in production now? We are not using it in production because we are really focused on economic research. So we are just, we have it and we update the index every time that the central bank publishes a report, that is every month. Until now, we use it for introducing in our models to see how they behave and how to monitor this, all these topics and to check it with other literature, but the idea is just to produce it and to have automatic updates of all the indices we have created. No more questions? Okay, so thank you so much and enjoy the lunch. Thank you.